In this box, we have an affordable option if you want to upgrade to some performance style brakes. We have some new pads and some new rotors, but not just any set of pads and rotors for our Mazda Speed 3 giveaway car. They have tons of options on carparts.com for any vehicle. Let's go inside the box and see exactly what we got. Right out the gate, we got some Power Stop brand Evolution Carbon Fiber Ceramic Performance Pads. So these things should grip pretty good. Another set, these are for the front for sure. They're much bigger. Heavy boxes are the rotors. We'll start with the small one first. These are also Power Stop brand rotors, specifically from carparts.com. We have a drilled and slotted rotor, but nothing crazy expensive. They're just a single piece. These are the rears. Let's move on to the big heavy ones. Nice matching set. These are much, much bigger. These though are labeled. This is the front passenger side, so make sure to look out for that when you do install these. So it's really important that you have the brake in where you bed the brakes. We'll make sure we do that. You can check that up close if you get them. We have some of the components of the brake caliper. Some of the plastic pieces that can be worn out. We have some lube so your brakes don't squeak or make noise. And we have these big old brake pads. Simple. Install is important to know that we chose drilled and slotted rotors because anything we can do to help get rid of heat while braking will leave us more fun time in the hills so that we don't have brake fade because when you ride the brakes long enough, hard enough when you're cornering, brake pads start to glaze over and then your brakes don't work as well. And it's kind of scary. So having this little bit of an upgrade, which isn't much more expensive than a regular set of brake rotors, will take it all. But Overall, does the same thing, acts the same way, no difference, and I think they look a little bit nicer. So the fact that PowerStop offers an option to do drilled and slotted at this price point, I believe is something that is well worth it compared to just a regular brake rotor. brake job if you know you know and I hope we don't need this before you install your brakes make sure you release your e-brake in the rear I'm deciding if I want to make the boys pissed or if I want to hang the caliper you should hang it is <laughs> it tie what are you doing <laughs> just to hold the caliper up getting some electrical wire out yeah it's the closest thing I had to rope so Remove the caliper. We have a T55. So we'll move it from right up here. We might have to remove those two. Ready to get a long boy. Remove the whole caliper bracket. 17 millimeter for the caliper bracket. Brake pads on this thing are cooked. 
If you're thinking about how you don't have a lift, it's okay. You can use four jack stands. The first time I did this, I was in my apartment complex in the parking lot that I was not supposed to work on cars in. Lift just makes it easier for us filming, and we do this every day. There we go. So to get this out, I lifted upward. I was able to release this little spring on the front, and then I was able to pull this out. And now our brake pads will come out, and you can see these are just about cooked. Nothing left on these things. I did not think we were gonna use this thing again, but we're using it. You can barely see. Well, let's just say I can't see. He's spraying off our brackets for our calipers. They're just coated and gross. Before we paint them to make them look fresh, get all this off with the sandblaster. I don't know if this is what the other side is look like. There's a lot more on this side. Oh yeah, yeah. There's Someone no replaced staying. one side. You can't see anything. Let's see what that before and after looks like when he pulls this one out. Get ready to get a dusty lens. Damn. For a blind guy, that's pretty good. Yeah, you can't see nothing in there. Yeah, that's what it used to look like. That's ready for paint. All right, let me give it a shot. So here's what happened. We have this sandblasting cabinet from Harbor Freight, but we literally have no space here for stuff like this. And this just got pushed outside, sadly, not on purpose. So this glass piece right here got cooked. Let's see if I can clean the inside a little bit. Definitely doesn't do much. Let's give it a shot. We didn't go with any crazy color. We just stuck with like a base aluminum. We don't want anything too poppy or too flashy. We just want to make it look clean. That's what we're going after. So I got some high temp paint here. I'll just go ahead and coat these. Let chill for a little bit and then we'll go ahead and do another coat. Okay, we can get a little more off. Randall, how do you get all the sand off of it? Did you blow it off? Uh, I just tried it with right there. Should I be worried about that seal I didn't get off? I'll just rub it off. Is it good enough? We took our caliper bracket that would go right here. We sandblasted it, we're prepping it, we painted it. Now we want to paint this, but we're doing it the simple route and it's really hard to prep this without a sandblaster. So we're gonna spray with brake clean, maybe scrub it down with a wire brush the best we can and then paint it. Should last, give or take, in Arizona probably two years. It's gonna look like this again, so I'm not super concerned. It's not like we're taking them off, taking the pistons out of the brake calipers, powder coating, all that. That'd be nice, but I don't think that will look right on this car and we don't have the time in our 60 day giveaway time frame. If you guys wanna get entered to win this car, carmaspeed.com down in the description. So it'll look nice, trust us on this. It looks kind of the lazy way, but should be good. If it took that much abuse from the wire brush and it still looks like this, it ain't gonna get much better. Press the piston in now. So being that our pistons are pressed out pretty far and our brake reservoir is filled, whenever I squeeze this in, that reservoir is gonna overfill a little bit with brake fluid, which will leak out. So if you ever wonder why your brake fluid just gets low and you don't see any leaks, usually it's because brake pads are probably on their way out. You wanna take the wire wheel to this one? Yeah, I'm gonna squeeze this one in. Bucks oh, she right out. there. Watch these cans cost nowadays. 
More than a gas a gallon? <laughs> gallon of gas? About more than a gas a gallon. <laughs> How's she looking over there? You spray one? Oh, snap. This thing is looking fresh off the Mazda Ford assembly line. You're hanging it by the brake line. It's okay. It doesn't take much. I was actually thinking it was gonna take a lot more. We'll let it dry, throw it back together. The nice stuff. So to keep these rotors from sticking on the hub here, I'm gonna put a little anti-seize in the back side of this. Shoot, we're gonna have some blank. Mm -hmm. You spray brake cleaner on the rotors because in the packaging has a little bit of oil residual on it so they don't rust in the packaging. It's important that you spray it with brake cleaner before you install your brakes anytime you get new rotors. So we got our brake piston seals right here. We're gonna have to replace these. So right now I'm greasing up the guide pins and putting some grease inside of these rubber boots. So these guide pins, you don't want these sticking. You want these to be able to move back and forth. This is what your caliper slides on is these boot or these pins right here. Check out my painting. Would you look at that? I'm an artist. Hey Cam, that's a nice shirt. Thanks bro, I got it on karmaspeed.com so I can get entered in and win this car. Didn't you know that? A little thread locker. Some on the threads here. for some brake and caliper grease. You name it, we have a link in the description to our Amazon list we are always adding to. Garage tools and necessities, it will definitely help you out. Always know that that's there. I should be using rubber gloves like Randall. I'm ruining mine right now, it's too late. Right now I'm greasing up these pins that go into the brake caliper itself. It's fun, right? It's a great time. So close. This might stress you out a little bit. It shouldn't. These, this angle to push these into the piston on the side closest to the engine on both sides. What I'm gonna do, which helped us, straighten these out a little bit here, grab it at the base and then pry it in. So it's less drastic of an angle. Once these things are in there, they're in there. I understand why these need to pop in there, but if I make my angle a little less dramatic, it's a lot less frustrating. It's mainly these side ones and it's still gonna pop in there. Just a little easier. I got this. like that. So these little tabs right here, it's gonna be on both sides of the caliper bracket. You wanna line these up. Let me get this turned so I can see. It's kind of a pain. Oh, that's why. I wanna make sure the guide pins are pulled all the way out. There we go. Now we'll be able to bolt our caliper onto our caliper bracket. And taking these out was completely unnecessary. I just forgot that this caliper is different than your standard caliper. 
And the only mounting point is this in these two middle guide pins. All right, so I missed a spot right here. But we don't want to get paint on that brake pad. So Randall is getting crazy. We're going the next ghetto route. We'll just paint it. There you go. Just like that. Hey, even. Picasso. I like it. It works. I like it, Picasso. Is that what it is? Yeah. <laughs> These are fun. Uh-huh. I can't get this ring in. It's like it was yesterday. Just a young lad trying to figure this crap out. Did you do brakes on your old Mazda? Yeah, I did it in the parking lot. And I remember fighting this with my dad. <laughs> get in there. <laughs> All right, so it's a game of sliding the bottom of the top in then having someone put their hand on that so it doesn't come out. Then you slide this behind this little guy right here. And then you need to push the whole entire thing in and it will like click in. We'll show you on the other side. All right, so we're gonna take the top up here, slider in. Then we're gonna go middle, okay? Then when we pull, Randall's gonna hold the top in and push in. Randall's even, he uses his finger to guide it. I'm gonna push it with the pry bar. Boom! She's in there. Creases in the seats came out, guys. Hell yeah. Yeah, we're moving on to the back now. They're just a lot smaller, a little bit smaller of some bolts for the mounting bracket for the calipers, and it should be the same process. We won't dive into the explanation of how to do this unless it differs from the front. It's just a repeat process. <laughs> The spring on the rear is a little bit different. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some one of those and then just pry out and then you can slide it out. It's not too bad. Putting it back is also fun. And then on the back side we've got a ratcheting wrench. Actually, let's just slide this off. Eh, quite a bit of life left. Oops. Yeah. Back brakes don't take much abuse. Now let's take the brackets off. You can see it's a little bit tighter back here, so having a ratcheting wrench is nice. So this is a brake piston compressor tool. So on some cars, you'll see the piston looks something like this. So your traditional piston, you just push in. This right here has to be twisted and pushed in at the same time. So that's what this tool allows you to do. You can't twist with traditional like pliers or whatever. So this tool right here goes on in. You might have the wrong one. Yeah, I do. You might be thinking to yourself, I have to buy another tool down in the Amazon list down below. I mean, you might want to, but the answer is no. You can go down to O'Reilly's, ask them to rent the brake caliper piston. What would you call it? Compressor tool? Yeah. Borrow it, you have to pay for it up front. Then when you bring it back, you get your money back. It's completely free. God bless O'Reilly's auto parts. Does AutoZone do that too? Yeah. Yeah, AutoZone does it too. So 
So when I had my original Mazda Speed 3, I was in the parking lot of my apartment complex, completely baffled, confused, and pissed because I could not get this to compress down. And like Randall just explained, you have to twist it at the same time. I couldn't believe it once I figured it out. I probably messed around for a solid hour and a half of just trying everything that just didn't work until I had the right tool. So I'm glad that this is a lot easier the second time. All right, so after fighting this for a little bit, we're gonna tuck this behind up here and then pull down and line up the bottom one, get it in the hole, and then I'm gonna kinda hit this one in place, push it in a little bit, then I'm gonna come down here, get a hold of it, hold it in with my thumb, hopefully pull it around the bottom one. And there she goes, now I'm gonna by this brake install. If you want to see a video of us installing a short shifter on this car, we can stop faster now. Now we can shift faster. With this install, you can go check out the process. If you're into the Mazda Speed Focus ST platform, they're very similar. We'll see you over on this video. Thanks for stopping by.